Number 11. What is the change in length of a 3 centimeter long column of mercury if its temperature changes from 37 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, assuming the mercury is unconstrained? All right. So we're dealing with mercury, and uh, given the temperature range, we know mercury is a liquid at this particular temperature. All right. So let's draw a little picture. So pretend mercury is in a tube. All right. Let me try to make this a little neater. It's in a cylindrical tube. It doesn't really matter uh, what the shape is. But let's just say it's in a, in a cylindrical tube. So now, and let's say here's the initial height of the mercury. I'm going to fill this in with yellow. And they tell us that the initial height of mercury in this column is uh, 3 centimeters long. Okay. So this is going to be 3 centimeters. 3.00 centimeters. Now, when this mercury is subjected to a temperature change, right, the mercury will experience a volume expansion. Okay? Now remember, it's a liquid. Liquids fill. The volume of a liquid fills the container to which it is in. So now that being the case, when we heat up this mercury from 37 degrees Celsius, which it originally has this particular height of 3 centimeters, to now 40 degrees Celsius, the volume of mercury will expand. Okay? The volume expands. Now, let's say it goes up to now this particular height. All right, so I'll color this whole area in now. So we should hopefully see the difference in color. Okay. So now the volume of mercury will expand. Okay. So this new height will represent the new height. Well, I think I kind of just saying the same thing again, right? This line here will represent the new height. Now this new height is directly proportional to the change in volume. Now I have to, I'm making one assumption that the container to which the mercury is in is rigid. Okay? So I think, you know, when they say assuming the mercury is unconstrained, I don't know, you know, they're saying unconstrained. Does that mean that it it's unconstrained to rise up in this column? Right? I believe so because it says it's in a column. So I I I would imagine that uh, this column has to be rigid, okay? If the column isn't rigid, then that means that I would have to take my answer that I'm going to give you and divide it by 3. Now, it's a little ambiguous what exactly they mean by unconstrained. Do they mean unconstrained in the vertical? Or do they mean unconstrained in all three dimensions, okay? To me, it wouldn't make any type of logical sense to, make, to say that mercury is in a column and all of a sudden, it's unconstrained in all three dimensions. How would it be in a column, first of all? Mercury is a liquid. If it's in a column of any sort, it has to be against a rigid container. All right? So my assumption is that the unconstrained um, assumption here is uh, a function of that the volume of this mercury can expand upward unconstrained. But it's still within the confines of this rigid container. Now, that being the case... All right, let's create a couple of equations. So the part here in yellow, will say that that's the initial volume. Okay, so the initial volume of this mercury will be equal to um, the, uh, I'm assuming it's a cylinder, right? So it's pi r squared times the initial height. Now, I don't know what the radius is, but don't worry about it. Okay, now let's say that this uh, part in red now represents the final volume. So I know that the final volume here will be equal to pi r squared, whatever the radius of the container is, um, multiplied then by the final height. All right? Now just keep these two ideas in mind. Hopefully that should make sense now. And let's now turn our attention to the change in volume formula. Okay? So it says that the change in volume mercury will experience will be equal to its... Uh, volume coefficient of thermal expansion, which is beta, multiplied by the initial volume of that mercury, multiplied by the change in temperature of the mercury. Now, the temperature change can be either in Celsius or Kelvin. It doesn't matter because the change value is equivalent for both. But now what I realize is I know my thermal coefficient of volume expansion, right? That's just down here found in the uh, textbook or whatever table you want to look it up uh, in. But what I realize is that, you know, they're giving me a height here, okay, essentially, of the mercury, and I don't have any heights in here. So 
what I have to do is basically somehow substitute height on in for my equation, or I should say substitute height into the equation. So let me just do one thing first. Let me expand on the change in volume. Now remember, any type you, anytime you're dealing with a change, it's always final minus initial. So to expand on the change in volume, this would be the final volume minus uh, the initial volume. That will equal then the coefficient of volume expansion multiplied by the initial volume, multiplied then by the, all right, the final temperature minus the initial temperature. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to these two formulas I developed before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in, let's say this particular piece, uh, which is equal to the final volume, I'm gonna substitute that into here. I'm gonna do the same thing everywhere I see my initial volume, I'm gonna substitute this on in. So let's do that next. So now I'm gonna have pi uh, times the radius squared times the final height, minus pi times the radius squared of the initial height, will equal then the coefficient of volume expansion multiplied by the initial volume, again I'm gonna do my substitution, times pi r squared times hi, I'll put this in parentheses, and then multiplied now by the, by the final temperature minus the initial temperature. All right, now I can algebraically do some, uh, do some canceling here, and that's the beauty of this, right? The both, every single term in my equation has a pi r squared in it, right? This is all multiplied, so that's basically a single term or whatever you can think about it that way. So these pi r squares will cancel. Now, what are we left with? We're left with the final height minus the initial height will equal the um, volume coefficient of thermal expansion multiplied by the initial height, multiplied then by the change in temperature. And look, this is exactly what we were thinking before. If I, I may not have mentioned it, actually, well, the, what I was thinking before, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but when I was thinking about the volume expanding here, I'm thinking about that the volume expansion is directly proportional to the height expansion. The reason why, or I should say the changes in volume here will be directly proportional to the changes in height because this mercury is in a container that is unconstrained in the upward direction, okay? Please remember the assumptions that I'm using here, that it's in a column and therefore it has to be in some type of rigid container to begin with, but the, the upward uh, area is the unconstrained portion. To me, it would not make sense. I don't understand how mercury would be in a column unless it is in some type of rigid container to begin with. So right now, uh, I get it down to this particular formula. And from here now, I can solve my question. It, it's asking for change in length. Remember, this final minus initial always represents change in length. Okay, change in height, change in length, tomato, tomato. So I'm just gonna uh, you know, bring these two variables together now to be delta H. And now this will be equal to the volume coefficient of thermal expansion times the initial height, multiplied then by the final height minus the initial, uh, excuse me, the final temperature minus the initial. And here's the formula, all right? So let's plug everything on in. So this will then be equal to the 180 multiplied by 10 to the minus six, then multiplied by the initial height. Now you can leave it in centimeters, all right? Uh, basically the uh, temperature units will cancel. So you're gonna be left with whatever unit um, you're using for your height. I'll leave it in centimeters this time, all right? This is 3.00. Just remember, if you leave it in centimeters, the change in height will be given to you in changes in centimeter. Multiply them by the final temperature. It sounds like the final will be 40 minus the initial is gonna be 37.0. And this will then be equal to, so this is 180 times 10 to the minus six multiplied by three times, uh, and then three times, it's gonna be 40 minus 37. And here, this is going to be 0. Actually, I'll do sig fit. I'll, I'll convert it to scientific. So 1.62 about. All right, so 1.62 times 10 to the, what do we get? Minus three, minus three. And this is in terms of centimeters. All right. So that's in terms of centimeters. So a very, very small um, change in height. Okay. Now, again, uh, if... 
if this mercury were just like kind of floating in air and it wasn't in a particular um, container of any sort. Now, remember, that's impossible if they're telling us it's a column of mercury. But uh, if that were the case, and let's just say, you know, mercury is literally this three-dimensional object just floating in space without being in any sort of container. If I wanted to then find the change in height of this, then what I would do is divide my answer that I found over here by three. All right. The reason why is because this volume would be able to exp uh, would be able to expand in three dimensions along its length, along its width, and along its height. Okay. Remember the value I found here. You might say, well, isn't that the change in height? Well, this is the change in height, assuming that the container that it was in was keeping it within a column structure, and that the the unconstrained portion was the portion that the mercury can expand upward. Just like a mercury, just think literally think of this as like a mercury thermometer. Okay. However, though, if mercury was able to kind of just float in air in some type of uh, some type of you know column format here without anything around it, uh, then what would then what would happen is you would essentially take this value which is the change in height, but remember it's also proportional. It's the same thing as the change in volume, all right? Um, so then you would you would basically take that value and then divide it by uh, three, okay? So, but in terms of this problem, I don't see how that could be right at all uh, because, again, to say that Mercury is in a column, I must have said this 15 times, right? To say that Mercury is in a column is assuming that the Mercury is constrained uh, at least in two dimensions, but the unconstrained portion we're assuming is in the third dimension. All right, uh, this is exactly how mercury thermometers work. And uh, so there you go. All right, guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time.